Hello and welcome back to another Katia V5 tutorial. This is the first episode in a brand new series which is going to be on drafting. This series is going to be on component drafting followed up by assembly drafting. Uh, during this, this series what I'm going to be doing is taking you guys through uh, using this component here which is a wing, wing rib uh, and I'm going to be going through how to actually draft this to the point where it looks good for an actual manufacturing drawing or at least hopefully anyway. So we're going to be using all the basics, we're going to be using quite a few bit of advanced stuff like detailed sections um, and even geometric tolerancing and dimensioning as well. So we'll start at the start then, uh, work our way through the middle and end at the end. Um, so we'll go straight through to the drafting workbench. Uh, I always go for a blank layout on mine because it just, it, it, half of these things you don't even need or um, it makes it easier to kind of change in the end. Uh, for this series, I I'm going to be using an A2 st uh, style sheet because um, it gives you a bit more room on the page. Uh, A0 is normally what you do in engineering, uh, but in this case, I just find that A2 is the a nice size. It gives you uh, for this particular part. So we'll go through. We've gone to our uh, drawing. It's completely blank. Now, if you haven't done drafting before, you'll notice that on the right-hand side, there are the toolbars here are pretty much the similar or even the same as the ones in 2D and 3D uh, modeling. There are a few other different ones which we're going through. So you'll also notice on the left hand side that the tree has gone, being replaced by uh, this new one. This top level here is the entire, uh, is the top level drawing, so drawing two. It's linked with the name of the file. And this is sheet one. So this is our actual sheet here. As you can see, it's been highlighted. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the properties of the sheet uh, and I'm going to define a few things. So number one, sheet one, uh, for the name of it, I'm going to call top sheet. And this is where you can also define the scale and this will define the scale of every single view you put in. So it's quite useful rather than having to keep doing it again. Now until we actually have uh, a, draw or a view we put into the drawer and we don't actually know exactly what we're going to do, but I know it's not going to be one to one because it's quite a big rib. Um, if it, when we bring one in, we can always change it afterwards. Another, another point I'm going to make as well is the projection method. Now, in this case, because I'm from the UK, uh, I'm going to be using first angle projection, as, as is generally what we use in the UK. Third angle, I'm pretty sure, is used more in the US. It doesn't matter which one you use, but it will affect uh, what happens to your views if you use a projection method. So that's what I'm gonna, going to uh, change here. You can also change the format as well in terms of the size of the page if you want to at a later date. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a border. Uh, and the way we do this is going to edit and you're going to the sheet background. You'll notice things have turned gray. So what Katia actually does is for the, for the you can have a background and a foreground. So you'll notice over on the right, the actual toolbars have changed. Uh, and right here, you've got a little icon which says frame and title block. So you go into here and there's, uh, there's several different title blocks that you can use. Uh, I'm going to be using this one uh, and then you use the create button and accuse apply. So this has created our border for us. Now you can actually create your own border de uh, templates. Um, you can see here that these actually act as normal kind of uh, components like lines essentially in a sketch. So you can actually create your own uh, and you'll notice also when we go back into the sheet foreground can actually change any of this. So what you want to be doing is, you know, you'll change everything here. So we'll say like, uh, you know, Mike Inc. for example. Um, we'll choose it as the drawing title will be Rib, uh, and we'll change the drawing number to be, let's say, um, R001. Whatever you want here, and you can change all of these uh, only in the sheet background. And once you've done that, you have to go back to edits and go back into your working views and only then can you start to make views and do everything else. So when we are in this view you'll notice that we can't change anything else. You can't select any of this here, it's in the background. Now wh what we'll do now is we'll create our first view. So I'm going to be using the uh, the front view which is the easiest way of doing it. There are other views which we'll be going through uh, in a later date. So we click on front view, nothing happens. On the bottom left hand side of the window you can see select the reference plane on a 3D geometry. So we actually have to go back to the part we want to actually create a view from now. Now we can either go to window or go to and go to rib or the way I like to do it is to go just to hit 
control and tab at the same time and that will cycle you through all the current windows uh, in Katia. So we're in our 3D environment now and what we'll do is if we hover over a particular part of uh, the part then we'll see that Katia is starting to throw up some uh, previews for us. Now depending on where we put this actual part you'll see that the plane changes. Now I want just a normal flat view so I'm going to choose this part here and you'll see it's been thrown in as a 3D part. Now don't click anywhere at this point because it will save it otherwise. We can now at this point rotate things around and change it as we see fit and this is the only point you can actually do this um, with great ease so make sure you get the view you want at this point here. So you can you can rotate it as, as you will, uh, you can use this little compass bit here to change it. If you right click on that you can actually choose a freehand, uh, set an actual increment or set it to an angle that you actually want as well. Now once you're happy with that, what you, can what you do is you either click the button in the middle there or you click anywhere else on the sheet and it will then process it into a brand new view. So there we go, that's our first view which we have here. So as I zoom in, you can see obviously Katia has made quite a lot of detail uh, and you can see there's different types of lines uh, in drawings. You've got these lines here which are the thicker lines which are representing the, um, like the sharp edges and they've got these thinner lines here which are, which are representing um, things like fillets, so kind of tangent lines. Now we don't necessarily want those because it can make it very cluttered uh, in, in on the drawing. So if we right click on the uh, the boundary of this drawing and go to properties, you'll notice there's quite a lot of different options we have on here as well. So we can actually change the scale individually here. We can change the angle only in a 2D plane mind uh, if you want to as well. But also there's these dress up bits here, for example hidden lines, um, threads, axes, and that will bring this up as well from the 2D part. Fillets part here, for example, at the moment it's showing the boundaries, but you can also choose to have either symbolic, you know, projected. Uh, I, what I would do is have a play around with these. I normally use symbolic because it gets rid of uh, a few of the of the of the boundaries and just cleans it up a little bit. So we press apply, it will update it, and you'll notice immediately that it's actually a lot cleaner. So if you zoom back in, there still is this part here which is the symbolic edge but all the edges in between look have gone so it's made it much cleaner already and that's something that you can do uh, in the view of the part itself. Now to make additional views of the rib we can do it one of two ways I can either go and choose this rib here uh, the front view and go back into the part um, but because this part here is quite is not flat on the top it will be very difficult to get the correct view so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a projected view and what that does is projects this view here you'll notice that it's already chosen this rib the reason being is because this rib is the only well the only view in the drawing itself but it's the, it's the active rib which is represent, represented by the red line going round the drawing so as you can see as I pull it one way or another it will actually project this drawing in a particular direction now what you actually get, if I pull it up or put it down, what you get will depend on the way your drawing is projected, i.e. if it's first or third angle projection. I would have recommend just going on Wikipedia and uh, having just googling it um, if you want more information on that. So I'm going to do uh, a, a lower view, so I'm going to click it right here, the projection view will process itself, and there we have it. So say now we want to edit this view here, uh, you'll notice that this top view here, this front view has got a red line around it, that means it's the active view. Uh, that means that if I do anything, for example uh, with text or with lines, it will be associated with this view here. Even if I turn it on to this part here, it will still be associated with the front view. So I'm going to have to activate this view here, so I'm going to right click and go activate, activate view, or you can just double click the edges and now it's got a red barrier. So if I want to move this, you'll notice because it's a projected view, I can move it up and down, but not left and right. So if I want to change that, all I need to do is right click, go to view positioning, and go to view position independently of reference view. So I click that, and all of a sudden now, 
I can change it. Now, if you decide actually I don't want that, uh, I actually want it to be nice in line exactly where it was, you can go to view position and call, position according to reference view, and it will pop it back into its place. But what you also have the option of doing is uh, is doing set or align views using elements. So let's say for some unknown reason, if you've got a, a, a part and you want to align, let's say it one over, for example. So I want to align this bit here with that bit there. Then that's what you can do using this. If you go to right click, align using elements, click the part that you want to align with, and then click the point you want to align with. And what it will do is it will shift it over. And that's just something that you can use, just something to be aware of. Uh, when you're doing this. Just be aware of course that then you can still move it normally so it will only align it to the point where it just it puts it in that correct position but doesn't fix it there. So I'm going to leave it there for today hopefully this has been a help to you if you've not used drafting before. In the next videos I'll be going through some more of the views that we've got here so we've got section views, detail views uh, and some of the dress up features as well. If you have liked this video, please do give me a like and comment below if you have anything that you kind of want to raise or you're unsure about or having problems with. I'll try and address it in some of my next videos and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Cheerio.